Good morning from the village of uh, Longthorpe, where I used to live. I'm uh, going to try and do a sort of shortish historical walk through Longthorpe village um, based around some old photographs I have of the village which might make it a little bit more interesting than it otherwise would be. Um, I'm starting off standing on what used to be the old A47. The A47 used to run through Longthorpe village until the Soap Parkway opened in the mid 1970s and where I'm standing now is where today's Thorpe Road um, used to head out towards Milton Ferry and Castor. If I just just turn the camera a second, yeah, basically this stretch of road here would have been pretty much the surface of the A47. And if I turn things around, it used to run pretty much through this tree line, um, straight across what is now the Parkway. Um, and then it would hook around Milton Ferry to uh, Castor and on to Wandsford. So this used to be the entrance point to the village. As you just saw, this is the ancient woodland known as Thorpe Wood, which is what gave its name to the top end of the village. And this has been here hundreds of years, absolutely hundreds of years. There's a nice little circular walk now uh, that goes through the woodland. It's very well looked after by the Bedfordshire, Cambridgeshire and Northamptonshire um, wildlife group. And uh, yeah, I must admit, I never used to come here when I lived here in Longthorpe. Uh, but it's really developed into a, a nice little nature reserve now. But this is, this is Thorpe Wood. Uh, and as I say, this is what gave its name to this top end of Longthorpe Village. If you, uh, if you come here sort of mid-April onwards till about a week ago, so probably about a three, four week period from mid-April, um, it's a wash with bluebells. There's not a lot of colour in here at the moment, unfortunately. It's a very peaceful way to start the walk, but yeah, it's a lot more colourful if you catch it in bluebell season. And again, again, in the summer when all the brambles are in flower and whatever, we sort of caught it mid-season. Uh, but it's a nice little oasis of calm at the end of the village. Okay, we're back out onto uh, Thorpe Road now, um, heading down towards the Fox and Hound. Uh, the name Longthorpe, uh, incidentally, was it's, it's actually got Viking roots. Uh, this place used to be known as Thorpe, which is a sort of Viking word, uh, if you drop the E off the end, for settlement. 
and dates back to the days when the Vikings used to pop in and out uh, this area popping in invading being chased off again and they left the name Thorpe which still lingers in these parts uh, meaning settlements And the long part simply means the village really is developed alongside the road as opposed to sort of out from a central um, green in the centre. It's a long thin village, so long thorpe. Um, yeah. Right for that car. Just means long village basically, but the thorpe part, uh, yeah, goes back to Viking days, which is uh, something I never knew until recently. Just coming up towards the uh, Fox and Hounds pub now. I'm going to walk a little bit past this because the photographs I've got from the past always seem to be taken from the other side of the pub. Uh, so it'll make more sense if I just uh, leave it behind as it were. I'm going to put up a couple of pictures taken about a hundred, uh, approximately a hundred years, just over a hundred years ago, um, of the Fox and Hounds. As you can see, it's a somewhat different building. Um, the original used to have a thatched roof, as you can see, and uh, a much more rural look about it. But on the night of uh, um, the 6th of January, I believe it was, uh, 1928, it burnt down. Uh, it was a windy night and apparently sparks got into the thatch from where I don't know, um, burnt it down. By the time the horse-drawn fire brigade got here, there was little left except the, uh, the stone walls around the outside of it. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it was completely finished, demolished and, and leveled. You, you can see in the uh, second of those pictures, um, a horse-drawn carriage, horse-drawn bus. Uh, and that was the horse-drawn bus service that used to run from the city center out to the Fox and Hounds, which used to be the terminus of that particular route. So uh, and that's why it's sitting there. Um, but yeah, the old uh, thatch version disappeared, 1928, and this uh, mock Tudor one, uh, which is quite pleasant to look at, but uh, was built in its place. Uh, looking down Thought Road from the uh, from the garage opposite the Fox and Hounds, and just put up a picture again from. I don't think it's a hundred years old. I think it's one probably dates to about the 1940s, 1950s. Uh, taken from the same location, you can just see um, the garage on the far right, or what it was as a garage back then. You can see petrol pumps and all sorts in the right-hand corner, and you can see Longthorpe Tower in the distance, which you can't see now because it's shrouded by trees. But uh, yeah, I'd say that's about 80 years predating this more current view. If you keep an eye on that white uh, cottage, uh, just centre left, because that's going to pop up in an old photograph or two in a moment. As you'll see from these wonderful photographs taken over a hundred years ago, there used to be a village pond in the road in this location. Um, I think it used to be spring fed. I can never actually prove where the water came from. It wasn't a puddle. Uh, it's shown on maps for you know several hundreds of years. Uh, it always amazes me that it used to sit pretty much on this location, um, stretching into the road actually used to be used by the horse-drawn buses when they came out from town. They used to run through the pond in order to clean the wheels. Um, but yeah, it's amazing that they, to think that there used to be a village pond right here, um, seemingly in the middle of the road. Amazing old photographs. There you have Longfort Tower built in the early 1300s by a chap called Robert Thorpe, who was named after the village. Um, it's from a family called the Duthorpes, D-E Thorpe, meaning Robert of Thorpe. Um, yeah, he wasn't a particularly wealthy man, he was just a regular sort of guy who made his money from, uh, um, I think he became a lawyer if I remember rightly. Uh, he just worked hard from bottom up and uh, built the tower. 
as a kind of status symbol really it was nothing more significant than that it was bolted onto his manor house it was a kind of uh, look at me you know look how well I've done it's a sta it's just a status symbol really the tower itself actually came to prominence in the 1940s when it was discovered that there was uh, wall art inside um, what they call domestic wall art uh, mainly of religious icons. I'll put some of the pictures up so you can see the sort of art that's in there. The artwork dates back to about, I uh, believe to date back to around 1330. Uh, but it was painted over a couple of hundred years, 300 years or so after it was um, originated because uh, it was pretty much during Henry VIII's reign when basically you know, religious icons and religious artwork uh, were dangerous things to have in your house. Basically he was clamping down on all sort of uh, religious icons of this nature so they painted over it, whitewashed over it and it was only really rediscovered again in the 1940s when they carefully removed the whitewash. Uh, otherwise it would have been lost and of course you can come here if you want to pay the money and visit which I've never done £3.30 I'll have to do it one day Just moved down the road a little bit from the tower into the village. Uh, I'll put up another picture from about a hundred years ago. That wonderful old building in the background behind the tree to the left there is what used to be known as the old house. And the old house dated back to 1500s, it's a 16th century house. Uh, that used to dominate the centre part of the village but again it was lost to fire 1970 burnt down completely and was levelled and was replaced by these houses and the Lees development which is just to the right there but yeah that used to be the old house just coming down now to the church of St Botol, Flonthorpe Church which is where I got married in 1985 built in 1263 by the same family that built Longthorpe Tower. The Thorpe family or the De Thorpe family. I'm just going to put up a cracking old picture now. I mean this is really really early pioneering photographic work. 1863 I think this photograph was taken um, of Longthorpe Church. The photograph, which was taken by a chap called William Bell, who was Peterborough's probably pioneering photographer in the very early days of, uh, of, of cameras and photographs. Um, it was actually taken about 10 years after it became a church, although it existed from 12, 1200s as a chapel, it actually became designated as a church only in the 1850s. Um, so the photograph was indeed a very, very early picture of this church which as you can see has developed somewhat since. Right, moved around to the peaceful side of the church. It's quite, uh, it's quite difficult doing this one. Today there's a lot of people around, uh, there's a lot of cars around and you're constantly being interrupted. Uh, but yeah, where was I? Um, yeah, church was built uh, 1263 by the same family that built uh, Longthorpe Tower. Uh, it wasn't actually a church until the 1850s, it was a chapel. Uh, chapel of St John prior to that it became a church in the 1850s and that photograph taken by a, uh, a very early pioneering Peterborough photographer called William Bell was taken about 10 years after it became a sort of independent church as it were as opposed to a chapel um, so it's a fantastic early photograph taken of the other side of the church um, yeah as you can see it's been modernized but uh, 
still keeps its original character as churches tend to do. <coughs> Just outside the church now another cracking uh, old Longthorpe image taken from about 1908. So this is an old one and a lovely scene taken from where I'm standing now. There you go. I suppose not too much has changed. The buildings are still standing. People long since gone, obviously. Another old one from the early 1900s. Difficult to recreate this one because you can't see the houses now. They're behind the trees. Um, you can see the road in the bottom right hand corner is still here. You just can't see the houses. Longthorpe Post Office on the right, which is a, uh, it was made a grade two listed building in the 1970s. Pretty sure I might be wrong by I might be wrong with this one. I think the post office used to be on the left hand side of the building originally. Uh, I may be wrong, I've had this argument before, but I'm pretty sure I've seen something before that said it was actually on the other half of the building originally. Um, but it's all one building. Just coming up now to the junction with the uh, Longthorpe Green development. Uh, on the corner here behind that tree is an old stump of an Anglo-Saxon cross. Lots of stories about this one. It used to sit in the grounds of a cottage. There used to be a single cottage behind this cross where there's now two more modern builds and it used to sit in the garden of that cottage. Um, it's believed to date back to Anglo-Saxon days. Um, so well over, well over um, a thousand years old perhaps 1500 years old, perhaps even older. It's quite vague as to how old it goes back and it seems to have served many purposes over its lifetime. One of those purposes was as part of the village stocks and as a whipping post where bad folks were tied to it and basically whipped. just about make out some of the uh, the moulding on the sides. It's virtually weathered away now but it used to have quite a lot of intricate patterns on it. And further down there are actually bolts where it was used for stocks and for whipping post purposes. These would be where the straps were to tie people to it. There's one set of bolts there. And there's the other set on the other side. Certainly could tell some stories if it could talk. This now private road, the cover shows on old maps actually, it used to go down to a place called Thorpe Hall Farm, or Home Farm as it was sometimes known. Uh, I've got an old picture of the farm which I'll put up. This was presumably taken after it was derelict as you can see, probably 1960s. But yeah, I'm not sure why it's a private road now, but it is. The wall on the right is the edge of uh, 
Thorpe Park, grounds of Thorpe Hall, um, which used to be open, uh, a parkland, there's all sorts of buildings in there now. Just coming up to one of what was two lodge houses uh, for Thorpe Park, the other one's long since gone as we'll see later. Uh, this is the one that's still standing. You can see the grounds of Thorpe Hall in the background. And this was one of the lodge houses, one of two. Here's another very old picture to get your head around and it's not easy. Those two lads on the left are standing either side of what is now the entrance to Audley Gate and just to the left of that cart in the distance is a field gate and that would be the entrance to Mayor's Walk as it is today. The house sort of centre right was the old toll house for Thorpe Road and on the far right you've got the gatehouse at the main entrance of Thorpe Hall which is no longer there. The Thorpe Hall is obviously, but the gatehouse isn't. So yeah, you're looking at the very busy Thorpe Road, Audley Gate, Mayor's Walk Junction here, well over a hundred years ago. It's a pretty amazing photograph. There you have Thorpe Hall. Uh, and an old picture of Thorpe Hall coming up. Absolutely no changes to the hall itself, but as you can see, the rather wonderful white gates in the foreground are no longer here. Sadly. I mean, you can write a book on Thorpe Hall, and I'm not going to do that, the sort of potted history. Um, built in the 1600s, uh, the chap who built it was a pretty wealthy and pretty important person at the cathedral. Um, and during the Civil War in the 1600s, he basically, um, he legged it. Uh, he bought the manor of Longthorpe and word has it, he took a lot of the stone um, from the old cathedral and built Thorpe Hall with it. And how much of that is true, I don't know. Chat was called Oliver St. John. Um, but yeah, it, it's thought that some of the stone in here was stone that was either not used in the cathedral, but was there or was part of the damaged part of the cathedral during the uh, 1640s Civil War uh, but he was a, as I say he was a wealthy and important part of um, the people at the cathedral and uh, as I say he bought he bought the manor here and uh, built Thorpe Hall became a maternity hospital 1943 to 1970 and um, was, was purchased by Sue Ryder in uh, 1986 described in a book in 1654 as a stately palace built out of the ruins of the bishop's palace and cloisters. There you go. Okay, well I've had to head out on Fort Road towards town now just to get a bit of context for what's to follow. Um, this photograph I'm putting up now was taken in the very early 1900s from this location. You can still see the houses in the distant left that are in the old picture. And you can just see the roof of the entrance to the girls' school, or the Peterborough School, far right. So this is the spot that that photograph was taken from. Um, and the approach is down towards Thorpe Park, which is where we're going to head now.
we're heading down now towards the uh, junction with Longthorpe Parkway. Um, I'm going to put up an old picture in a minute, but it's going to be a hard one to make sense of. What you have to remember is this section of Thorpe Road in the distance wasn't there a hundred years ago, nor was the roundabout, and obviously nor was the parkway in the distance. Keep that in mind. Thorpe Road used to hook up to the right ahead of that bollard. In fact, where the bollard is in the distance, where that car is just passing, used to be the site of the lodge house. That's the second of the lodge houses, the one that's now obviously no longer here. And the park was behind that, so basically the trees behind the bollard in the distance were within Thorpe Park. And the lodge house would be buried now underneath where that bollard is on the approach to the roundabout. OK, I'll put the photograph up now so you can have a look from the very early 1900s. The house is the lodge house. The house would sit just in front of the roundabout today. And as you can see where the sheep are coming from, that is where Thorpe Road used to go. It used to hook round to the right. And we'll be on that section in a minute because it's still standing. And the boys would be pretty much just in front of me now on this pavement. Um, but the trees to the right of the roundabout as we swing round would have been in Thorpe Park and as you can see the wall to Thorpe Park would be ahead of that bollard as it stands today. Right, back to reality and modern day. OK, where we're walking now on this footpath as we swing round to the right is where Thorpe Road would have run. So this is where those sheep were, right where we are now, in these bushes on the left. Um, and what we're coming on to here with this sort of redundant uh, bit of road, this is, this is Thorpe Road as it was. This is the old Thorpe Road, the original Thorpe Road. Still standing but going nowhere. We're going to head in now to what would be alongside that lodge house and try and actually get into the park. There we go. Escape at last. Just passing over a stream here that disappears into a, a tunnel that then runs underneath a roundabout behind us. I just bear that one in mind for the next photograph I'll show you in a few seconds. Okay, okay, next photograph from about 1906. Uh, take a note of the path you can see hooking around to the left, and then take a look at this old photograph, and you can see that path. Now, the lodge house that sits just the other side of the roundabout heading into town on Thorpe Road, you can see just right of centre, and the kids in the foreground or in the centre foreground are standing on a bridge that went over that stream um, which has now been obviously shot through a tunnel so this is the spot where this fantastic old photograph was taken 120 years ago now if I turn around 
the path that was in that photograph is this one that hooked around and went up to four pool which you can see just left of those uh, trees in the center those chestnut trees so you can still trace elements of the photograph just to prove you're in the right spot and this was a very very popular spot with Peter Borians back in Edwardian and Victorian days very popular they'd walk out of town and this was countryside to them as it still is today and I was heading off now towards the sort of finale of this walk and really the reason why I'm doing the walk because uh, this place has always fascinated me and yet I've never been there but I've read much about it and that place is the holy well fish ponds um, that sit in the grounds or just to the side of the grounds really of uh, Thorpe Park uh, so much has been written about these fish ponds uh, most of it contradictory so you can almost make up your own story there are even legends about them and myths about them they're medieval fish ponds the medieval fish ponds are so somewhere between 1100 1500 they were built they were built for or created for the purpose of fish um, you know growing fish for the purpose of eating now that's usually done by monks most fish ponds seem to have a link to uh, monks monasteries and whatever um, but you know there's a manor house around here pretty close to the ponds there's obviously Thorpe Hall but they all date well after the medieval era so the ponds were not created for the purposes of, of um, those houses it's not impossible that Thorpe Hall didn't make use of the fish ponds uh, for free food or for good food or for easy food um, carp pike very popular foods back in the sort of 16 1700s uh, but it's almost certain almost certain um, this this was all part of the sort of monastic operations from the abbey which we know today as the cathedral it was an abbey until uh, I think the King Henry VIII's era the Reformation era uh, when abbeys were pretty much um, pillaged taken over by the monarchy the self-declared head of the church uh, the people who ran the abbey in Peterborough uh, were very shrewd and they quickly changed its definition to cathedral to leave it untouched but I think prior to that when it was an abbey I think the, the, the monks at the abbey this was these were their fish ponds um, and there was a myth that there's a tunnel that runs under the ground uh, from these ponds all the way into town I don't think it's true but we can pretend we'll have a look when we get there um, but there's a lot of Peter Borians who will say it's true definitely true their parents told them and their parents parents told them um, just a lot of myths around it but they're medieval fish ponds there's supposed to be seven of them uh, old maps seem to show there's about nine and the theory is well, I'm sure it's true uh, one of the ponds is fed by a spring which I hope to find and the waters just then flowed from one pond to the next um, so that's what we're heading for holy well ponds I think I know where they are um, they're probably a bit overgrown now but yeah I've, I've never seen them uh, and I look forward to doing so As we get nearer to the site here you can see from the housetops to the right it's very close now to the bottom end of the Longthorpe Green development and uh, yeah that puts some uh, dangerously close to civilization really these used to be pretty isolated um, you, you know there's just fields all around them even as recently as 30 years ago uh, now they butt right up to a housing estate but I'm hoping they still are in a reasonable state and not in any way damaged by I don't know whatever today's society might throw at them we shall see 
I'm hoping I can get round the back here because the pond's the other side of these houses. Um, I need a path. I think there's one here. Yeah, that's good. Here we go. And up. Medieval fish ponds of Holywell. And there's many a Peterborean fisherman of a certain age that will tell you there are very big carp still in here. And I'm sure there are. Which is a fantastic thought. But they must surely be descendants from the uh, medieval carp that were grown here by the monks at the Abbey. And these are the offspring several generations down. Now, I want to try and find the one pond around which in the 1700s they built an ornate folly, as they called it, because it's that folly um, with a little grotto attached to it, uh, which is where the legend of the tunnel to the Abbey or the cathedral comes from. Um, just got to find it now. It's not these. Right, I think I found it. Yeah. Wow. There you have it. The mythical underground tunnel from Holywell to the cathedral. If you want to believe that. Well, that was me in 2020. And this is a chap called Roland Baxter. And this picture was taken in the 1930s at exactly the same location. A very iconic photograph from Holywell Ponds. I had the pleasure of talking to Roland's daughter recently via my Peterborough Images uh, website and she identified her father. Um, so yeah, it looks slightly different then than it does now, but it's exactly the same location. And um, in the foreground there, where the water is rushing is the spring that really feeds all of these ponds. I don't see any tunnel, but those that believe in the myth will no doubt say it's been bricked up. There's another section over to the, to the right here. Um, a bit difficult to see. I'll try and get the camera inside this gate. Hold it a second. Okay, we're inside now. Well, not literally, but the camera is. Inside the grotto. Is that a hole in the corner? Is that the tunnel? <laughs> it's so great. Best never to find the truth. This is the one other photograph I've got of Roland uh, Baxter in the 1930s, taken from this spot. As you can see, the pond's a bit more overgrown now than it was in that photograph, but it's, uh, yeah, same location.
Back in the uh, in the 1800s, the waters from this spring were actually uh, bottled and sold as uh, peppermint water. Um, it's apparently very very high in sediments, particles. Um, believed back then to be of benefit and th of therapeutic use. I think we call it just dangerous today. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was actually bottled up as a as a mineral spring source. I don't think it lasted very long. And the people who drank it probably didn't last too long either. So there you go, the Holy Well Ponds Folly. Worth spoiling it all by pointing out that historians know this folly was built in the 1700s, which obviously means it wasn't here in monastic days. Doesn't mean it wasn't a tunnel or a cave there, but it wouldn't have looked like this uh, because it would have predated this by hundreds of years. But yeah, great to have a myth. Keep believing. Well, there you go, the tranquility of uh, Holy Well Ponds in Longthorpe. Uh, worth a trip to see these, but haven't really enjoyed this one at all. It's too busy, too many people, too many interruptions. Uh, this is not my scene. Uh, but it's a nice way to end. I've always wanted to come here and have a look uh, and reenact those photographs which have always fascinated me from the 1930s. Uh, it's, it's a nice spot, really nice spot. I hope uh, we continue to look after it. I think it is looked after by uh, local nature people and they do a good job and I'm sure there's big carp in here as well because it looks that way and there's bubbles everywhere but there you go if you're a carp fisherman you probably know all about this place so yeah that's it I hope you enjoyed it probably more than I enjoyed it the skies are looking uh, angry uh, I think we're gonna have a violent breakdown from this warm weather so that's my cue to get the hell out of here I think so time to escape <laughs>